Okay, here's a piece that should have been in the in the tales of my youth section, but uh, anyways, here it is. It's called One of the Bad Kids. I've always reveled in my path, forever proud to be one of the bad kids. In junior high, I slopped two-year-old rotten milk all over the walls of the boys' bathroom, a statement against a dark institution. I guess you could say I had time to brood down on the farm. One time, I took the manure spreader out on the highway at three in the morning, just opened her right up. The groundhog I'd killed the day before shot out and lay sprawling out on the double yellow, not looking croaked, just hung over. But the law ain't got nothing on me since I've been pulling them little hoodoo tricks. You can surely manipulate the universe with black candles, gunpowder, and fresh bovine afterbirth. Hold your hands up and scream before the elements. May every breath be raw and vital. It's up to you to create your own weird sorcery to suck the holy marrow from the ether. All right, thank you. Here's, here's a little different thing. You know, being, being that I... Uh, you know, was influenced by the by the beat writers early on. They had that whole thing. You know, they were into jazz and everything. One day, I was sitting around a, a pizza place in Eureka Springs and figured I'd do a little. I don't know. They're they're playing jazz and everything. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll write one of those. It's called Pizza Coffee and Jazz. Jazz piano plays off deep bass, melodically convulsing into dynamo until it explodes into. <laughs> The air is full of wild notes and smoke, ecstatically noodling through inner space, creating a cool ambiance punctuated jointly by rich java and pizza grease. My scant Italian blood grooves on the atmosphere. A slow, seductive jazz blare throws me into a spin, and I remember things long lost, but not mine. Sunday is mellow by design, and there's always water dripping somewhere. Thought is hard unless I key into the jazz, goes round and round and back and forth. The ghost girl I court is snapping her fingers and moving her feet, and I'm at a loss for words and stuck between dimensions. So, yeah, I like to do, you know, I like to do intense, you know, violent kind of stuff or, you know, sweet stuff or observational stuff and Sometimes I like to be, you know, I like to be the sexy man. This one's called Doorways. Kisses, sweet, wet, hot. Neat parts, feet, pits, belly, earlobes, back of neck, doorways to nirvana and kink. Every bead of sweat reflects our divinity and dissolves like little sugar cubes on our tongues. This one's called slow, deep, and easy. It was a dreamy, dreamy Sunday morning. I couldn't smell someone's frying chicken, but the air was sweet with the smell of lilacs and sex. The mood was slow, deep, and easy. Sweet nothings held real substance when we looked into each other's eyes and felt truth come over us in a divine shudder. No little games, no preliminary chit-chat. I'm going to suck your toes. Just chew right through your nylons and go to town. The smell of sweat and leather turns me on, making my desperate licking even more frenzied as I explore between each toe, relishing every bit of dirt and jam like manna from heaven. Nothing makes me hotter, and your feet are the best by far. Perfect sweet arches and cute little toes. And don't think you're getting away any too soon because I'm putting both feet in my mouth. And I won't let you go until I've sucked your toenails clean off. So stop fighting, lean back, and enjoy it. I call that piece the shrimper. And I don't think, probably a lot of people don't know what, what a shrimper or shrimping is. It's just... Someone with a with a foot fetish, basically. So here's another little uh, little segment here. Uh, when I got out of high school, I spent the first three you know, first few years, like when I should have been in college, I guess, traveling around the country, going to rainbow gatherings. Which, if you don't know what they are, they're uh, 
kind of countercultural events that happen in national forests to pray for uh, peace and healing of the planet. This one's called First Road Trip. Young and oblivious to danger, I rushed out into America, wide-eyed, open-mouthed, and drove that piece of crap Ford Escort off into follies and adventures. Behind restaurants and grocery stores, I feasted on the refuse of our first world culture. Life was easy and fun was cheap. Love was everything and everything was beautiful, like the girl I left behind who withered and faded over time. This one's untitled. Tripping around the country, I was in an acid haze or an acid daze or maybe a flaccid laze, but I lived and loved and saw the angels smiling at me from on high when I was laid low and stoned to the bone, their pierced labias glistening in the face of the mellow mountain sunrise. Jones and coffee, candy, a bit of love, whatever we could get our hands on because we had very little but lice, scabies, dirt, but most of all, each other. I want to tell you a little, give you a little anecdote, a little background to that. The the pierced labias. Um, rainbow gatherings are clo uh, clothing optional events, and just being being a kid, and just fresh off the farm, out on my own for the first time, I saw a lot of um, a lot of nudity and. One time I just was kind of dozing off, laying, you know, laying there in the grass, and I opened my eyes, and a, a woman was, um, had her trading blanket out. A lot of people trade, you know, artwork, you know, handmade stuff and whatnot. And she was sitting there nude with very obvious genital piercings, and it was kind of like, wow, I've never seen anything like that before, you know. So I definitely had to write about that. So here's another piece from that, from that point, you know, that time in my life. It's called uh, Wake and Bake Camp, 92, 1992 Rainbow Gathering, high in the Colorado mountains. We were a bunch of freaks, never sleeping, eating acid and fried taters, taters, taters all night until dawn, when we, when we would run out of wood, energy, taters, or all three. Coffee was the best with weak old grounds, a rich sludge of ambition at the bottom of the pitch blackened pot or old coffee can, or whatever us burnout wood tramps could find to make coffee in. Weeks without showers, but we smelled of life. Sweat, wood smoke, patchouli commingled in the mountain air, passing softly into memory to be reborn as poetry in later life's nostalgic remembrance of the good times, which were pretty damn good at the time. <laughs> 